In the previous lessons, we have learned how to start solving linear equations, but we never had to deal with fractions. Now, what makes it a fraction kind of linear equation? As soon as you have a number at the bottom like that, then we can consider this as a fraction. Now, there are multiple ways that you can do this, but one of the things that I would suggest is that if you have a mixed number, now a mixed number, remember, is when you have a whole number and a fraction combined. What I would suggest is that you turn that into a normal improper fraction, okay? So remember, um, just in case you haven't done this in a while or if you've forgotten how to do this, if you have three and three over four, if you need to turn that into an improper fraction, you take this number and you multiply it by that number, which is 12, then you add three, which is that number at the top, so that gives you 15, so we're gonna say, 15, and then you're gonna say over this number here, which is four. So let's do another one just in case, or just for more practice. So let's say you had to turn this into an improper. So you say two times three, which is six, then you add the one, which is seven, and then you say seven over the number at the bottom, which is a three. Let's do one more. Let's go with three and two fifths. So remember, you take this number times this number, which is 15, and then you plus that number, which is 17, over 5. Okay, so that's the first thing that I, that I would do. So I'd say x plus 7 over 6 minus, now 3 times 4 is 12, plus 3 is 15 over 4, equals to negative 19 over 4. Okay, now when you are at this step here, I want you to look at all the numbers at the bottom. And then you can also put this one over one because that is, it is over one if there's nothing there. And what you need to do is you need to try to find the lowest common denominator. So between six and four, um, the lowest common denominator could be a 12, right? Because you could definitely, so let's say lowest common denominator and that would be 12. So that means we're gonna have to multiply this one by 12 at the top and at the bottom. We'll do it quite slow in the beginning but then we will get a little bit faster. And then this one you can times by two and two because you're trying to get it to 12, and then this one you times by three and three, and then this one you can times by three and three. Okay, so what that would then give us is 12x over 12 plus 14 over 12 minus 45 over 12 equals to, ooh, 1938, and then 50, whoa, what am I doing? 57 over, let me try that a bit better, 57 over 12. Now listen up carefully guys, when you are busy with an equation, an equation is something that has an equal sign, then when these numbers at the bottom are all the same, you can ignore them, okay? That is only when we are busy with equations. And so now we can just go write everything, so 12x plus 14 minus 45 equals to 57. There we go. Now we are at the very basic stuff that we looked at in previous lessons where you just have normal variables and numbers. So now you just do the normal stuff where you take um, some things to the, you take the variables to the one side and you take the numbers to the other side. But because you guys have gone through that already, I'm gonna go quite quickly now. So I'm gonna take these two numbers, the, the 14 and the minus 45, and I'm gonna take them to the right hand side. So we're gonna end up with 12x equals to 57, then it's gonna become minus 14, and then plus 45. And then that's gonna give us 12x equals, now you just go work that out, 57 minus 14 plus 45, and that gives us 88. And then to get x alone, we're obviously gonna to have to, um, remember what we did guys, we divide by 12, and then you do the same on this side, and so x is gonna be 88 over 12, just write that, 88 over 12. And then if you had to simplify that or type it in on your calculator, it simplifies down to 22 over three. Here's another example. Okay, so we know that this is a fraction equation. Why? Because there's a number at the bottom. So what we then do is we put all of them with a number at the bottom. So if there is nothing, you just use a one. There we go. Now what we do is we just look at these numbers at the bottom and we find the lowest common um, denominator, and that lowest common denominator could actually just be a six. You don't have to change this one. It can stay as a six. So let's just say that the lowest common denominator is six. So that means we're gonna have to multiply this one by six and this one by six. This one, we don't have to do anything. By the way, 11 over 6k can also be written as 11k over six. It looks, it, uh, some of you might be like, uh, dude, that's the same thing. But 
It's not. I mean, it is the same thing, but it's a little bit different. Here, the 11 over 6 was in the front. Now I'm saying 11K over 6. And I've observed that many learners prefer this one. I prefer that as well. So if you want to rewrite it like that, we can quickly before we do any other changes. So we can just go 4 um, equals 11K over 6 plus 1 minus k. Now we can just put everything over 1, over 1, over 1, and then the lowest common denominator is 6, so we're going to multiply this one by 6, multiply this one by 6, and then this one over here we can multiply by 6 at the top. Let me do that a little bit neater for us. So we're going to times this by 6, times this one by 6, uh, times this one by 6, times this one by 6. So that gives us 24 over 6 equals 11k over 6 plus 6 over 6 minus 6k over 6. And then I've just added a little note for you guys. So that rem so remember, when all the denominators are the same, you can ignore them. Note, this only works with equations where there's an equal sign. Sometimes we're not busy with equations, then we can't do this, okay? But we can because this is an equation, so then you literally just end up with 24 equals to 11k plus 6 minus 6k. Now it's that all too familiar place where we take all the variables to the one side and all the numbers to the other side. You guys are probably pretty good with this by now, so I'm just going to go pretty quick. So on the right hand side, I'm going to keep the k's over there. So we'll end up with 11k minus 6k. And on the left hand side, we'd end up with 24 minus 6 because this positive 6 would come over. So on the left hand side, we would end up with 18. And on the right hand side, we'd end up with 5k. And then if you had to get the answer, k would equal to 18 over, let me write that a bit better, 18 over 5. So when we look at this one over here, the first thing we should notice is that there are fractions. Well, there's denominators. That means this is a fraction type of linear equation. Once again, you can rewrite these ones. Um, I've, as I said, I've noticed that many learners would actually prefer if we keep this as 3r over 2 minus 5r over 4. I don't know. For me and for the learners that I've seen doing this, they just seem to find that that's a bit more comfortable. And I agree. I, I think it's better. Okay. So what we now do is we look at these numbers at the bottom. And we just want to get them all to become the same thing. So we want to find a common uh, denominator. Now, here's a little trick. Some learners really struggle. They're like, they start counting in twos, and then they start counting in fours. But if you want to find the fastest way to get the number, you choose the biggest number, and you count in that one. Okay? So let's start. 16. Oh, but actually, I just realized 16 is a denominator, um, because 2 can turn into 16, 4 can turn into 16. So we can actually just use 16 as our lowest common denominator. So that means we don't need to do anything with this one. This one here would have to multiply with 8. Let's do that in a different color. So we'd multiply this one by 8, multiply this one by 8. This would have to multiply by 4, and this would then you always do the same at the top. And so we would end up with negative 3 over 16. Now 3 times 8 is 24 over 16 minus 20r over 16. Now remember when the denominators are the same, we can get rid of them. So we can actually just say minus 3 is equal to 24r minus 20r. And now this is quite easy because all the variables, which is the r's, they are already on the right hand side. So we can just say uh, 24, they're on the same side, they're together. So we can say 24 minus 20, which is just 4r. Now don't panic when you see something like this. It's like, oh, Kevin, but 3 can't divide by 4. What do I do? It doesn't matter. You just do the same thing that we've always done. So you divide this side by 4 and you divide that side by 4. And it's like, yeah, but Kevin, it doesn't go. It doesn't matter. You just say r equals minus 3 over 4. And there's your answer. It cannot simplify. There's nothing else you can do. That's it. So when you look at this question, you can see that there are definitely denominators. So this is definitely a linear equation with fractions. So let's first go change these things over here to make them more comfortable. Remember how we did in the previous examples? So we can say that and then that. Now we look at these numbers at the bottom and we need a common denominator. Now the lowest common denominator there could actually just be 15. So that means this one does not need to change. We would have to multiply this one by 5. So you do the same at the top. And this one you'd also multiply by 5, and then you do the same at the top. Some of you might be wondering, uh, Kevin, could we maybe like combine these together first, these ones over here? And the answer is yes. Actually, in all of the previous examples, um, let's quickly go back. 
So like this example that we did earlier, um, you can combine all of these numbers before you get your denominators, but I think the way that I've showed it is just a nice structured way to remember what to do. So now going into the next step, we can just say eight over 15 equals to minus 10n over 15 plus 20n over 15. Now we can get rid of the denominators because they're all the same. There we go. Now the variables are already on the same side, so that makes life very easy for us. So we can just say minus 10 plus 20, which is 10n, and then this side over here is eight. Now don't panic, you just do what we normally do. So you divide this side by 10, and then you do the same on this side. So that means that n would then be equal to eight over 10, but now be careful, that can still simplify. The number two can go into both of those, and so that would actually become a four over five, and that is the most simplified answer we could get. And then here is our last example for this lesson. So once again, let's go make everything a bit more comfortable. So four X over three, and then 11 X over three, and then minus 65 over four. So if you wanted to combine these two together, you can do that, but I'm just doing a more, yeah, as I said, I'm just keeping it the same. So for some of you, you like to have structures and um, steps, so that's why I'm not changing the methods. So we look at the denominators, and we need to find a common denominator. Now that could be a 12. So we could say LCD is 12. So that means we'd have to multiply this by four. And by the way, if you're watching this and you like, uh, sir, or not sir, um, some people call me sir, it's quite weird, but you can just call me Kevin. Um, so some people will say, yeah, but why don't we use uh, can't I use 24 because 24 can also work? And my answer is yes, you absolutely can. What, what will happen at the end is that you'll just have to keep simplifying your answer and you'll get the same answer as someone who uses a 12. So it doesn't always have to be the lowest common denominator. I guess it just has to be a common denominator, okay? So you and your friends might be like, dude, I said 12 and the other, one's, the other person's like, yeah, but I said 24, so you're wrong uh, because I'm getting the right answer. But if you just had to go and get your answer, you'll see that it's actually, you're gonna get the same answer, okay? So let's move on. So you times this one by four. Oh, I'm also gonna times that by four. And then we times this by four. And then here we're gonna times this by three. And then here we're gonna times this by three. And so that's gonna give us 16x over 12. And then on this one, we're gonna get 44x over 12. And then, whoa, big numbers. So did someone just say, let's get, get a calculator? And so that's gonna be minus 195 over 12. Now, once again, all the denominators are the same, so we can get rid of them. And so we can just combine all the variables, which are they all on the same side, which makes our life a bit better. So 16 plus 44 is 60. Okay, now, when you look at this, don't worry, just do what we always do. So you divide by 60, and then you do that on both sides. So just do that for now. And then you just start trying to simplify, or you can just type this in on your calculator and it will simplify it for you. If your teacher's a bit weird and they're like, please do it without a calculator, because they're still living in like the stone age, then what you would do is you'll just take a certain number that can go into both of these, I don't know, maybe the number five, and you divide both of them by five, and then you just keep going on and on and on and on like that until you get to the most simplified answer, okay? But as you carry on, you should get negative 13, over four.